Okay, so I stayed up all night watching the 67th live letter, and I have to say, staying up to watch this whole thing kept me up to a very late hour. Who am I kidding? By the time this was over, it was basically morning where I live. I thought I could just stay up and power through to get this out earlier, but I passed out at my desk and just finally decided, time to go to bed. Anyways, we got nearly 7 hours of the developers giving us a bunch of updates for Endwalker. Some of the stuff was new, such as the footage from the upcoming Pandemonium Raid. And my god, doesn't this area just look freaking awesome? I love this aesthetic. The swinging cages, the chains all over the place, the bats flying through the air, that ominous cathedral slash castle in the distance. It's very eerie, and if this is the mood they are setting up for this raid, I cannot wait to see what kind of crazy encounters they come up with. So for today's video, what I really wanted to look at was the top 5 things that they announced for this live letter. Now, obviously this is all my opinion, and I would just love to hear yours down in the comments below. So you know, go ahead and share your top 5 moments in the comments. Now, without further delay, let's start with this list. Number 5, the updated Achievement Log. So, um, the current design for the Achievement Log is, well, it's kind of boring. It serves its purpose, but it doesn't really pop out and wow, you know? So, when they showed the new design for the Achievement Log, I thought it looked fantastic. They are going for a journal aesthetic, which, hey, that's a great look. It has a lot more color, and I think the new graphics for the Achievement Point values look awesome. I mean, there is not really much else to say about it. I think it's really great they are updating UI elements in the game, and they announced the maps will also be updated for Endwalker in the previous live letter. And I say, yeah, keep updating those UI elements. Make them look modern. Make them look better. I still have my fingers crossed for more HUD-related updates. I would love to see different styles to choose from for, like, the party element and hot bars and such. This might just be a pipe dream, but I still hope one day to see it happen. Number 4, NPC Follow. So, this is a very simple feature that I think will add so much to the narrative and immersion in the story. What this feature does is, NPCs will follow you around when you are participating in various quests, and the NPCs can even mount up if the situation calls for it. They will also have conversations while following you around. This is something many modern RPGs do nowadays, so it's pretty nice to see an MMO taking a stab at it. Now, I completely understand it won't be anything remotely like how a game such as, oh, I don't know, Final Fantasy VII Remake did it. In Final Fantasy XIV, the NPCs will only be following you during, you know, specific quests. But that is still really cool. I think this will help the players become even more bonded with the Scions, and it's a vast improvement over having the NPCs just teleporting to the next location, ready to meet you whenever you get there. Also, you can apparently use g -pose to take some pictures of your merry band of adventurers. Number 3, the PvP update. So, to be perfectly transparent, I don't PvP much in MMOs. But I am glad it's here and that the team are taking strides to improve it and make it better for those that, you know, do enjoy PvP. So, the big announcement was they are putting in new 5v5 PvP content. And these are meant to be short matches that can be played casually. And they are also adding additional distinctive PvP actions. They said that these new actions should enable a more unique gameplay experience in PvP while still keeping the flavor of what makes a job special intact. The example given was Dragoon would still maintain their ability to jump around. Anyways, the new mode is called Crystal Conflict, and there is, as you may have guessed, a crystal at the center of the map, and the teams are located on the opposite sides of the map. The gameplay loop is, you fight for control of this central crystal, and whoever comes out victorious, the crystal will then start to path towards that team's starting position. I'm guessing there will be a way to turn the crystal back around, otherwise why would anyone bother trying after that central fight, you know? They also show that there would be these environmental hazards to make things a bit more interesting. Yoshi P said that just pathing the crystal to camps could get boring, 
In the example shown, it was a huge Bomberman-like explosion. Also, there are ranked matches for Crystal Conflict, so players who enjoy being, you know, a little bit more competitive with their PvP, they're going to have that option. Lastly, let's talk about the PvP reward structure. There will be season rewards based on ranking and tier. You can get titles, achievements, and other accolades for participating in PvP. There is no player power to be gained, it's purely cosmetic. The season rewards can only be obtained by participating in the Crystal Conflict mode. There will also be a separate reward path for the season called a Series, which, by the way, is a tentative name. Um, the Series will have its own set of rewards. Um, the Series will count any mode of PvP, so in the Series you accumulate experience which you use to level up your Series level. It looks like there will be a UI element that shows you a path, and each level you move across the path. Rewards will be given at certain levels, which are indicated by a star. They also mention that a season will be shorter than a series, and that the PvP event called The Feast would be removed in 6.1. Number 2, the Spear Fishing Minigame. Okay, the new spear fishing looks fantastic. I think it is so cool they are updating it to be more of a mini game that tests your timing. I really want to engage with this new feature. They said it's not just timing either. You have to use abilities in order to break down the fish's defenses to be able to get them. And it all just sounds really good to me. To be perfectly honest, for the most part, I am not a huge fan of Disciple of the Land jobs. I leveled them up because I do think it's useful to be able to gather the materials that you need, but it was never something I thought, yay, let me run around gathering stuff. This spear fishing minigame on the other hand, it actually looks like a lot of fun. You know, I think it would be awesome if they created minigames like the spear fishing minigame for all the different gathering jobs. Maybe this is a test to see how players react to the minigame, and it's something they are actually considering. Number 1. The Calling Card System So, the Calling Card System is the feature that has me most excited. The name is tentative, so who knows what it will be called when the game finally launches. It's a feature that will let players customize their profiles, which will be displayed before a match begins in PvP. I don't PvP much, so that's not really what caught my ear. What caught my ear was the potential use of the feature outside of PvP, which they did allude to in the presentation. I love the idea of this. It's another fun way to customize the way your character is perceived in the world. When another player checks your profile, they would get another flavor of your personality and what you want to show off. I honestly think it would be a lot of fun seeing how other players you know, customize these calling cards. And yeah, the idea of being able to unlock new ways to customize the card by doing activities in the game, I, I don't know, that just sounds so cool to me. I know the example in the live letter was PvP centric, but that could easily be expanded to getting cards by doing other activities in the game. Getting other achievements. Oh, you did the ultimate fight? Here's a cool card customization that you can use for your profile. The possibilities have me giddy. Yoshi P's example was it would be like a business card. Now, all I know about business cards I got from American Psycho, but if it's anything like that, people take the way their business cards look very seriously. Um, I look forward to the potential of this outside of PvP, so I really hope they manage to do that. And those were the five features announced in the live letter that I thought were the best. Like I mentioned earlier, I am not the hugest PvP fan, but I am more than willing to give it a try. The nude mode does look like it could be a good bit of fun. What I cannot believe is the thing that I am most excited for is the calling card system. That caught me by surprise. I just think it would be an amazing feature that has a lot of ways to be expanded on and allow for some fun customizations. Anyways, what was your favorite announcement? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Take care and have a great day.